Hello everyone, my name is Blaine Pearson and I am an instructor in Texas Tech's Personal Financial Planning Program. In this video, we're going to examine the role of the normal distribution of stock returns. To begin, let's first start with the normal distribution. If we want to analyze stock returns and we want to understand the role of risk in stock returns, we have to understand how the normal distribution factors into that. We have to assume the stock returns all come from a normal distribution. All the term normal means is the way that the curve is. The shape of the curve follows a normal distribution. This normal distribution comes from the ideas of the central limit theorem. We will not review the framework from which the normal distribution is arrived at in this video. First, we need to understand the role of mean and standard deviation. When we take a look at stock returns, our mean return can be in the center here. From here, our standard deviation is the amount of probability that our data will fall into. So, for example, there's a 68% probability that our stock return for any given year will fall between one standard deviation of its mean. A 95% chance that it will be within two standard deviations and a 99.7% that the return will be within three standard deviations of the mean. So let's take a look at an example. Historic annual returns for a stock have been 12%, and the standard deviation of those returns have been 9%. What returns would you expect from the stock in the future? Taking a look at the normal distribution, we can arrive that there is a 68% chance that the stock will be within one standard deviation of the mean result. So if we know the mean return has been 12, we can simply take one standard deviation away to get the low end and add one standard deviation to get the high end. So there is a 68% chance that the stock return will be between 3 and 21%. If we want to know what two standard deviations of that return will be or a 95% probability that those returns will be, we do the same thing but instead take two standard deviations away. So here we go from 9 to 18. Now notice our mean does not change. And on the high end we would add 18. So given this data we understand that there is a 95% chance that this stock will be between negative 6% and positive 40% based on the historical data. We'll do the same thing for the last deviation as well. Again, this is Blaine Pearson and in this video we covered the role of the normal distribution of stock returns. Thank you for watching.